An astonishing prediction is found in the first verses of Surat Rum, which refers to the Byzantine Empire, the eastern part of the later Roman Empire. The Byzantine Empire, which had met a great defeat, would soon gain victory. Alif, Lam, Mim. The Romans have been defeated in the lowest land, but after their defeat, they will be victorious within three to nine years. The affair is God's from beginning to end. On that day, the believers will rejoice. These verses were revealed around 620, almost seven years after the idolatrous Persians had severely defeated Christian Byzantium in 1613 and 1614. In fact, Byzantium had suffered such heavy losses that it seemed impossible for it even to survive, let alone be victorious again. Following their defeat of the Byzantines at Antioch in 613, the Persians seized control of Damascus, Sicilia, Tarsus, Armenia, and Jerusalem. The loss of Jerusalem in 1614 was particularly traumatic for the Byzantines, for the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was destroyed and the Persians seized the true cross, the symbol of Christianity. In addition, the Avars, Slavs, and Lombards were also posing serious threats to the Byzantine Empire. The Avars had reached as far as the walls of Constantinople. Emperor Heraclius ordered the gold and silver in churches to be melted and turned into money in order to meet the army's expenses. Many governors had revolted against Heraclius and Byzantium was on the point of collapse. Mesopotamia, Cilicia, Syria, Palestine, Egypt, and Armenia, which had earlier belonged to Byzantium, were invaded by the idolatrous Persians. In short, everyone was expecting Byzantium to be destroyed. But during this time, the first verses of Surat Arum were revealed, announcing that Byzantium would triumph in three to nine years. This predicted victory seemed so impossible that the Arab polytheists thought it would never come true. Like all other predictions in the Quran, however, this one also came true. In 622, Heraclius gained a number of victories over the Persians and conquered Armenia. In December 627, the two empires fought a decisive battle at Nineveh some 50 kilometers east of the Tigris River near Baghdad. This time, too, the Byzantine army defeated the Persians. A few months later, the Persians had to sue for peace with Byzantium, which obliged them to return the territories they had taken from it. The Byzantine victory was completed when Emperor Heraclius defeated the Persian ruler Khrosrau II in 630, recaptured Jerusalem, and regained the true cross for the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. In the end, the victory of the Romans, proclaimed by God in the Quran, miraculously came true within the three to nine years time frame stated in the verse. Another miracle revealed in these verses is the announcement of a geographical fact that could not have been known by anyone at that time. The Romans had been defeated in the lowest region of earth. This Arabic expression, Adna al ad is interpreted as a nearby place in many translations. However, this is not the literal meaning, but rather a figurative interpretation. Derived from the word Dani, which means low, the word Adna means the lowest. The word Ard means the world. Therefore, Adna al-Art means the lowest place on earth. The Dead Sea Basin, one of the regions in which the Byzantines were defeated in 613-614, is the lowest region on earth. 
For Christian Byzantium, the loss of the true cross was the heaviest blow in that defeat in Jerusalem, located near the shores of the Dead Sea. At 399 meters below sea level, the Dead Sea is the lowest place on the Earth's surface. The Romans were defeated in the lowest land, just as revealed in the verse. However, as only modern measuring methods and equipment can prove this fact, it would have been impossible for anyone living at that time to realize this truth. Yet it is clearly stated in the Quran that this region was the lowest land on earth, and this provides further evidence that it is the divine word.